God is awesome. And uh, the guys that were here while we were gone, they did an awesome job. And uh, like I said this morning, I just honor them for what they've done and I thank them. And uh, everywhere, everyone just told me it was great. Even as spiritual sons, I'm really, I'm really proud of them. Of spiritual sons that are here and that I can go away. And even there, there was never a thing that I felt, Ish, I need to find Bluefontein. It was just this peace. And I, I honor God for everyone that were involved and that took responsibility and just went through. Amen. Praise the Lord for them. We are. We're talking about the armor of God. Amen. Amen. Whose sword is in your hand? Ask your neighbor whose sword is in your hand. Amen. Tell him, pass off for you. <laughs> if you don't know what it means, let they translate it for you. What did we say? In the armor of God, first of all, in different words, allow the word to control you. Let's say, I will allow the word to control me. And that is the helmet of salvation. Oh boy, this was long ago, hey. Okay. May the Lord have mercy on us that we don't re forget the word of God. Amen. So the helmet of salvation is like I allow the word of God to take hold of me. Amen. Amen. So how will that also happen? The renewing of the mind, taking every thought captive, breaking the strongholds. I have the mind of Christ in my spirit, and more and more I must live according to the mind of the spirit, the mind of Christ in here. I do hold the purposes and the feelings of God, the scripture says. Amen. Amen. So let his mind control and arrest my mind. Amen. That is ultimately that what God wants us to do, to allow him to do that. This word will control my mind. Let's say, this word will control me. Something is controlling you, let it be, please, the word of God. Amen. Secondly, allow the word to protect you. So that is the shield of faith. When the enemy comes, you just remind him who is owning everything. You go and you have some outreach in Iraq, you just tell the enemy, Iraq belongs to the Lord, sorry, you need to leave. And you don't have the fight trying to protect yourself. Stand by faith and you do your job, what God has called you to do. And the enemy can try and throw his whatever. He said, ting, 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 against the shield. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you have to faith, the faith to do that. Otherwise, lay down if you don't have the faith and you have a fight with the devil. But if you have faith, you don't have a fight. Hello? Because the battle belongs to the Lord. If you have the faith, you will not have the fight. Yeah? Because he has won the fight already. No. Do you have the faith? <laughs> then you will not have the fight. You will have to stand on your rights. And you know, you don't believe that they believe in you. You don't believe they will hear you. So you must make a real effort. Put up a fight before there's a settlement. When you come with stature, you come with faith in a situation and people can wow, 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 you say, I believe this is it. No fight. Hello? If you have a shield of faith. And whatever they say, they can be criticizing you at the job, they can belittle you, they can speak behind your back, they can do whatever. It will not touch you. Because you have the faith that there will not be a fight. I will have the faith that there will not be a fight. Amen. With the enemy in this way. There will be a fight by me taking and you taking the ground for God. But look at Joshua and how did they fight? It was just one major, major testimony of not having them having this major battle with the devil. This one's here. Praise the Lord. That was the second one. Allow the word to protect you. I will say... I allow the word to protect me. 
third one, allow the word to set you free. Amen? That was the belt of truth. What is touching you the most? Don't get touchy with me. Let the world get touchy with you and touch you the most. More touching you is nothing except the word. There's circumstances, there's hurts, there's things, there's disappointments that people hurt you, there's things that you expected and it didn't happen that way, there's negativity, whatever, but it cannot touch you so much as what the Word of God can touch you because you have this belt of truth firmly around your waist. Amen. You are touched by the Word. Amen. And that is your freedom. doesn't matter what your circumstance, what doesn't matter what is further than the Word. Because the Word can understand. Not true? So you are in the Word. Amen. Amen. And then in circumstance. You're not first in trouble. You are in the Word. Amen. And then trouble comes and it deals with you. By the Word. Amen. Thanks for the past. The end of the cop out, Senor. Allow the Word to set you free. Number four. Take hold of His Word. It's that I will take hold of His Word. That is the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. How you get that Spirit, that, that sword in your hand, it all depends on what Word are you holding on to. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. If you have the sword of the Spirit of God, the sword that is from God in your hand, just look at what whole Word are you holding on to. Because if it's the Word of God, yes, then you have God's sword in your hand. That is the test. Hello? They hold and take hold of his word. Keep it in your hand because you're holding something tonight. You're holding bitterness. You're holding your opinion. You are holding something in your hand tonight. If you like it or not. That is how you were created and are created. But let it be the soul of the spirit, the word of God. Amen. Take hold of his word. Number five, portray and show his word. That is the breastplate of righteousness. Amen? That was all about bragging about his word in the sense of I show forth. My identity is in the word. God, something more than anything else, that is your heart. With the breastplate of righteousness, righteousness talks about my right standing with God, we said. Hey? So my stand with God is through Christ, who is my righteousness. And in, my, in Christ as my righteousness, my heart is safe. Guard your heart more than anything, anything else. And if your heart is in unity with Him, portray your heart to the world. And through your heart, it's the Word. And the beauty of His Word through your heart. You want to portray His beauty through your heart. When people see a pure heart, when people look at somebody and they see the genuineness of someone's heart, not about, wow, look at what he can do. Yes, it's good. But at the end of the day, the most beautiful in someone is his heart. Will your heart portray the beauty of heaven? Make sure the breastplate of righteousness is with you. Amen. And the word will be portrayed through your heart. Amen. The next one was, is, proclaim and preach the word. Amen. The shoes are the readiness for the gospel to take it out there. And lastly, live strategically according to the word. That is the blueprints of building a house for Father God with Jesus. So the seven, quickly, and then we go on. Number one. The word of God will control me. Boom. You will arrest me. Amen. Secondly, the Word of God will protect me. Thirdly, the Word of God will set me free. Fourthly, I will take hold of the Word of God. Amen. For breakthroughs. Number five, I will portray the beauty of the Word through my heart. Amen. Number six, I will proclaim, I will preach this word. Wherever I go, I will proclaim it. I will brag about it. Amen. And number seven, I will build a life strategically with a blueprint that is from Him. Amen. 
a house for my father. Praise the Lord. So whose sword is in your hand? Ask your neighbor. Now we had this morning this illustration of two guys coming with, with two swords. My question is, are you standing with such a thing in your hand? Chaka chaka zoom zoom. Some Tupperware plastic rubbish. Be careful what you have in your hand because you can have something like this, you know? And you can walk around and think you're walking around, you're having a life. And be careful what you have in your hand because you have something in your hand. You have a sword or a knife in your hand if you will like it or not. And if you are ignorant, you're going <coughs> to hurt people. You're going to cause damage in situations as you walk with your sword, your knife, your whatever you have. Whose sword is in your hand? Ephesians 6, 17. Soul of the Spirit is the Word of God. We said that. Now, four, five type of swords. One is the, your own sword. You hold unto the Word. Now, understand, it's holding unto a Word. Amen? Because the sword of the Spirit is the Word. So, a sword is a Word. I saw them a car. Okay. So my own, own sword is representing my words, what I say, what I feel, my flesh actually at the end of the day, my opinion, what I feel about whatever I'm going through. That is my sword that I have in my hand. And many times I can use that sword to protect me. And somebody that is hurt, you come close to him, you want to love him, you want to help him, and he feels uncomfortable, and when he feels uncomfortable, you just experience the sword. He's just pushing you away. Hello? And he's giving you f this funny remarks like, no, I don't need this, or whatever. And you suddenly must look beyond his words. What is he saying? Because his words are cutting like a knife. Because he has a sword in his hand, and he's his own sword that he tries to protect his own life. Don't take it personally. Many times people, they long for something, but they don't know what to do because they have the wrong sword in their hand. They have their own sword. And you feel hurt when you help them. But meanwhile, you must keep on helping them. But don't take it personal. But ask the Spirit to help you to just pull His hand away and minister to His heart. Amen. Because this hand doesn't know what to do. The only way He knows how to protect is with the sword. Hello? With his words that can cut you. His words that can damage. You heard a word. You will be a nothing. You will come nowhere in your life. Why you are always in trouble? Why you are always in trouble? And that word is there. And he's cutting and you try to shh, shh, shh with the other sword against that. Instead of take up the shield of faith and say, where is the word that I must use. Oh, I can do all things through Christ. I'm so precious to God. He's rejoicing over me. I will not be cut by that sword, but I will be cut and formed by this sword. Amen. That will cut off all the rubbish. The sword, that is your own sword. Uh-uh, that's the sword of the flesh. We have that one, sword of the flesh. Second one, the acceptable sword. You have your own sword, sword and this with this thing you say your opinion and everything and everything and it becomes acceptable to you to do certain things acceptable is the norm of humanity of how they see things how you can wear certain clothes in certain ways that is not good that is not respectable 